Hello, everybody, and welcome back uh, to Jeremy vs. Life. Today, in our pocket knife collection video, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover unique knives. I know that in some of my past videos, I've had some unique knives uh, for specific unique features, but since those kind of fell into those other categories, maybe high end, maybe tactical, something along those lines, I, these don't really fit into many categories. They're just kind of oddities in and of themselves. Um, and I'll kind of explain what makes them unique. Uh, the first one is going to be this Outdoor Edge Razor Light EDC. Some of you guys may have seen this on uh, BattleBox or in BattleBox. I believe that's actually where I acquired it. Um, looks like a normal pocket knife, but that is not a two-toned blade. That is a scalpel blade insert that allows you to completely remove the blade. That way you can just discard this when it gets too dull for use and you can just put in another one. And the blade replacements are not that expensive. So if you're someone who doesn't really like to sharpen uh, knives or you don't know how or you don't feel comfortable doing it, this may be a really great option for you. Since it's got a traditional back lock, it's got a nice action. Build is okay. I mean, you definitely can, can adjust. Um, I loosened it just a little bit so that I could flick it out, as you saw. I mean, it's a good EDC shape. It's a good size. It's super lightweight. And if you don't like the, uh, the idea of having to sharpen a knife, you can just replace the edge. Um, the steel isn't great. It's probably some type of relatively inexpensive, cheap surgical steel, but it is scalpel sharp when you get them out of the pack. They come in a pack like this. You get a handful of them, tear it open, and replace it. And that's it. So the Outdoor Edge Razor Light EDC is the first it's pretty interesting knife. The next one is by a well-known knife company, Trade. This one is, I don't remember the exact model, uh, SCH 40 or 401L. This is an ultra light EDC knife, deep carry pocket clip tip down, carbon fiber handle with stainless steel insert. So this top slab is just carbon fiber. This bottom slab is carbon fiber with a full steel insert for the liner lock, uh, running on Teflon washers. What makes this knife special? Well, that's not metal. That is ceramic, which if you do super light duty stuff and you just need something that stays sharp for a long time, this is a great option. Uh, the issue that I have is it's very chippy. In fact, I think I actually broke the tip on this one a little bit. I don't know if it'll focus on that or not. There you go. Kind of chipped the tip. Um, there's a couple of rough spots on the edge from chips as well, and sharpening it is a pain in the butt. So if you like something like this where you're just maybe cutting vegetables or you maybe cutting cardboard or something like that where you need something that stays sharp for a really long time, it's not an expensive knife, very unique in that nature that it's all ceramic. There is no metal in that blade at all. So pretty neat ultra lightweight, nice, slim carry, could disappear in your pocket, but it's pretty good size. Locks up well, like you would expect any shade. Very, very sharp. Maybe a cool backup blade or a camping kitchen knife. I don't know. The next one, I think it's more of an oddity because of where it sits in the market. Um, this is just called lightning knife. Uh, the reason I think that this is a bit of an oddity is it's only like 50 bucks and it's in full auto. I think it's a 440C steel, so not great, but easy to sharpen, well known to the American market. Knife people probably know it very well. Aluminum handle, fairly easily actionable. It's a little tougher than uh, maybe high end Microtech, but for 50 bucks, you can't really complain. 
believe those are for dust, not a pocket clip. I have taken this apart and it's basically the same exact functionality as any double action auto. And what I mean by that is you can push it in and out. Some you have to pull back to charge, charge it. This one you can pull in back and it goes. Um, I love the shape. It's very lightweight. Good, thick. I mean, you can use this. It's got a lot of wiggle, as you would expect any auto to have. But I've used this quite a bit. I've never had it fail. I've never had it push in on me. I've never had it unlock anything. I've used this as an easy EDC knife. I bumped the mic. I use this as an EDC knife quite a while. As you can see, it's got some wear and tear on that finish. I put some good use on it, but uh, stayed pretty sharp and it never failed me. And it's a really, really nice shape. I was concerned about pocket lint and dirt and dust. Um, I actually used this to shave some drywall and I thought that would be the end of this knife. I was able to action it. You could feel grit, but it wasn't too bad. Um, and then I just basically took an air compressor and blew it in there and it was basically like new and wiped it down. So that, I think that's what makes it more unique, more that where it sits in the market and um, its value. The next one I actually think that's it's unique is a buck. Again, a very well-known knife. The reason this one, or a knife company, this one's a little unique in that it's a fixed blade keychain knife, which you don't see all that often. It's got a plastic sheath And it's just this little tiny keychain fixed blade knife. Got good jimping up top. Use it to open packages or whatever you need. It just slips in. And this the tension on this is what locks it in. So you just slip it in. It can be sli slipped in either way. So you just do that. You can slip in this way as well if you want it. And that's it. I mean, it's a, I think it's 420 HC, USA made. Pretty sturdy little knife. I can't really bend it with my fingers. It's got decent jimping. You're only gonna get one, maybe two and a half, I mean two and a half fingers on there. And I've got medium to large size hands. But you get a pretty good purchase on it for what you might need. Something like this to cut open a box. Super lightweight. Just an interesting uh, keychain knife because you don't often see keychain knives that are fixed blades. So pretty cool little uh, offering from Buck. The next one is a cold steel pocket Bushman. What makes this one unique? Well, I think there's a few things. One, is this an all steel single piece handle with the swell? I think the shape of that handle is unique. Very heavy duty, thick blade. I can't recall the steel on this. but this is an older one. I'm not sure if they even make this anymore. Not that expensive, like 30 bucks or something. If you need something that's just a, a shop knife or a beater knife, this is a great option. But what really makes it unique is a locking mechanism. You'll notice there's no liner lock. There's no button, there's no back lock. So how do you unlock it? Well, you pull on this rope and it moves that back. And essentially, once you do that, you can move the blade. Now that may be a pain in the butt to most people because it's not easy. It is not an easy move to make. That spring is pretty tough and I've got quite a bit of experience. I did EDC this for a while just to see if it loosened up and it did. I think it did. Um, it's a really strong lock. I mean, that pushes up on that blade and it's pressed up against this folded steel and it's not coming loose. You'd have to do something catastrophic for that blade to come loose. I mean, that is, it feels like a fixed blade. I'm not going to say it's the same as a fixed blade, but it feels like one. I batoned with this, no issue. I've hit it in wood like this with the baton on the back for tip strength testing. Very heavy duty workhorse of a knife. But man, unlocking this is not easy. And opening it one-handed, you got to have serious thumbs, like professional thumb wrestler thumbs. But it's a pretty interesting uh, 
option from Cold Steel. I love Cold Steel. So maybe a backup bushcraft blade or camping blade. I wouldn't say backpacking because this thing weighs a ton because it's all steel. But it's, it's a solid knife. I mean, it's a solid workhorse of a knife. So that's what makes that one unique. The final one is unique in the sense that it's an expensive piece of hot garbage. Bear Ops, made in America. Uh, this is a subsidiary of a subsidiary of Bear and Sons, I believe. Gives you a whole bunch of uh, information there. You can kind of pause if you wanted to read the whole thing. Um, their warranty information is a little misleading, and I'll explain that in a bit. Present presentation is decent. This thing is a giant piece of garbage. Fit and finish on this is horrible. The only thing that's good is the materials. You even hear it lock. It is the softest opening in a bad way. It feels squishy. Now, this is a first production run. And they still do um, sell this. I don't remember the model, um, other than the fact that it is a uh, MC one hundred A I B K S. I'm sure they have a name for it. Like I said, though, good materials, all aluminum handle, steel lock, liner lock. CPM S30V USA made. You would think this thing, I mean, it's even got decent ergonomics. I like the shape. Uh, but that's about it. It's a soft, rounded handle. It locks up okay. You've got a little bit of a wiggle there, but here's where it really falls. That is the detent. That's where the detent stops. It sucks it in to there. What in the actual hell? You have to physically push it the rest of the way in, and it still doesn't. You have to, like, force it in there. I mean, most people go to jail for that. It almost feels like they tried to put the wrong blade on this handle. And then the other thing is this liner lock fit and finish is horrible. Feels like a rough, stamped out piece of metal. This thing will, can strike a ferro rod. I mean, that is like 90 degree. There is no rounding on that whatsoever. You're getting thumb skin off of that just by scratching my thumb like that. Look at this. That's my skin. It is sharp. It does run on phosphor bronze washers. On paper, this knife is good. Oh yeah, the other thing. You see that stop pin? One, it's crooked. Two, it doesn't seat in at all. And I've taken this apart and I've tried to finish this. One of the biggest issues that that happens is the liner inside doesn't sit flush in that handle. You can kind of see it right in here, the little shining light under the bronze. That's, the, that's that steel insert and it doesn't sit flush back here. It has a lip, which causes everything in the pivot to go out of whack, which means this can't sit properly. I wish this was a better made knife. I mean, it just looks like a Frankenstein of a knife. The, oh, and the other horrible thing. Can you guys see that? Look, that blade is curved. Not like a recurve, but like friggin' bent. Either that's a horrible grind job or that metal is bent. And of course, that means it, it's going to go off to the side too, because you can see it's even on both sides up until about here, and then it curves left into the handle. So I think that's what makes this one unique. It is an expensive piece of hot garbage. I tried to reach out to them and see if there's something they could do. And I left messages, two messages. I did get a hold of somebody 
She said she would send me an email with information. And that grind, ugh, look at that. Someone gave zero cares in this. Man, I wish this was a better knife. So disappointed. But I never heard back. They never sent me an email. They never called me back. Nothing. So whatever their warranty may be, um, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. I haven't gotten a different one in hand since I know that they're pretty well known for their traditionals. I've not gotten my hand on a traditional. I wanted something a little bit more normal, everyday pocket knife. Because this could be a really nice knife, but It's just terrible. Anyways, uh, that's that's that. My next video um, is going to be kind of no name or copycat knives. I've got a handful of them that I really actually like. Um, I'm trying going to talk through some, maybe their place in a collection and or EDC. So hopefully you guys join me for the next one, and uh, I'll see you next time. Later.